Hello and welcome to the Boys Upstairs Show, week eight, Halloween. We're getting active. And we're going to go ahead and start with the Pittsburgh Steelers traveling to Cleveland. The Cleveland Browns are minus three and a half. The over-under is 42 and a half. We're going to go ahead and get into these injuries with the Browns. Can you guys see that? Yep. Sure. Sweet. All right. So Nick Chubb is active. That's big. Kareem Hunt out. Also big. Odell, questionable. He, he's not even really that much of a threat anymore, but Jarvis, also questionable. Baker, also questionable. So there's a lot of question marks at the Cleveland Browns. We're going to start with Scott coming live from Dublin, Ireland, where it is currently four in the morning. Who are you <laughs> taking in this game? How's it going, Tommy? How's it going, boys? I'm going to go Steelers plus three and a half in this game. I you know, That might be a cold take. Some people might not like that. Steelers are coming off a bye week, which I think is huge in this game. You know, these are two teams that know each other extremely, extremely well. The Browns have a fantastic run defense, top five in the league. We know what the Steelers game is. Najee Harris is that offense. He just runs, runs. And if he's not running, bench checking that ball down to him. I think Najee Harris will have a good game. Not as good as we've seen from him. I think this game is going to come down to keeping Big Ben upright and keeping Miles Garrett at bay. If the Steelers can manage to do that, keep Ben upright, give him time in the pocket to air it down to Claypool and Deontay Johnson. I think they've got a legit chance of winning this one. So I'm going to go and I'm going to roll with the Steelers plus three and a half in this game. Although having said that, I am a bit concerned. If Baker Mayfield comes back, I think this could shift the game. I mean, there's not too many questions around the Browns. We know that they run that ball a lot. Like it's it's just what, what they do, whether it's Nick Chubb, whether it's Kareem Hunt, when it's Dearness Johnson, it doesn't matter. They will run that ball. But I just feel like the Steelers coming off the boy might just have the edge in this one. So I'm going Steelers plus three and a half. Scott, I love that. I love that pick. And I'm piggybacking. It's our word of or it's a, the word of this podcast is piggyback. <laughs> um, I'm piggybacking that uh, for a couple of reasons. First of all, this line makes me nervous. I think with Baker, who is playing or not, will definitely not be 100%. And even if he, yeah, he's not going to be 100%. So I think they're going to rely heavily on that run game, especially since Nick Chubb's coming back. And when they rely on that run game like that, the defense for Pittsburgh doesn't have too much to game plan for. It's also a uh, – I think this is also a prove-it game for uh, Big Ben and the Steelers. Could be a legacy game for Big Ben. You never know. Do you believe uh, in him? Do you believe in him? I, I believe in Big Ben here, honestly. That's what I thought. That was my first uh, – it was love at first sight when I saw that line. Good. And I said, I said, you know, I think Big Ben's still got enough in the tank. It's a reason to come out and he's going to prove it, that he still can be a contender this year. Uh, retire after this year or not, doesn't matter. I think Big Ben's going to come and give it his all. Uh, I think the defense is going to take advantage of this uh, flawed slash banged up Cleveland offense. And I think it's going to be a Steelers plus three and a half, if not a Steelers outright. And I didn't like the under here because it was or the total because what was it, 40 – 42 and a half. 42 and a half. That's really, that's pretty low for a total, especially when you never know what the Browns or the Steelers can do in terms of scoring. But I'm going to, going to go first half under 21 and a half. I took that on Monday night and it worked out pleasantly. Um, I could see over 42 and a half hitting, but I don't see it uh, cruising along through the first half. I, I think we're going to see 14-7, uh, 14 to 3, 10 to 7 something like that after the first half, and maybe they could break away a little bit in the second half, but I think it's going to start slow with a little bit of scoring. So Steelers plus three and a half, first half under 21 and a half. Not even to piggyback, I'm going to deflect, and I'm going to take the over. 
on the first half of this game, uh, over 21 and a half. Uh, I, I agree with you, Sam. I couldn't really understand. First of all, uh, I am syrup. I'm maple syrup. I like the Steelers plus three and a half, uh, just like my brothers Sam and Scott have said previously. Um, I don't think it's because that the Browns are flawed. I do think it's mainly the banged up factor uh, when, when looking at their injuries, people coming back, people being questionable. I They do have a dynamic offense. They're not always clicking or hitting on all cylinders. But, you know, if they all end up back towards the end of the season, then I feel like they can maybe make a strong push. But, I mean, Ben Roethlisberger owns Cleveland, and it, it, it's going to continue that way uh, the, after this Sunday. I like the first half over on this. I think maybe they'll be fired up coming out of the gates. Don't know who's going to be on the field for Cleveland, but I mean that Dearness Johnson guy looks kind of looks all right as well. But I'm uh, I'm taking Najee Harris to have a big game uh, for the Steelers, and that's what's going to make him get plus three and a half, and then first half over twenty one and a half. All right. Um, I just want to say thank you for having me back, boys. Um, I think hey, thanks for coming week, back, bro. I appreciate it. I appreciate it. Uh, I think last week I went two for one. Hey, hold on. Before you keep going, lift your helmet up a little bit. It's, I it, can't fucking breathe, Tom. I'm, that's what I'm saying. Lift it up a little bit so your mouth's not blocked. Uh, yeah. Is that better? Yeah, go ahead. All right. Should I start from the beginning? Yeah. I mean, you didn't All say right. anything, but yeah. <laughs> all right thanks for having me back boys um i think i went two for one last game uh last week my lock didn't hit but i think it's a it's a great start uh for this week i think i'm gonna go with the steelers uh plus three and a half um just because i don't know if i'm not sure if baker's playing for this game and uh like ben basically owns cleveland so i'm gonna go ahead and take uh the plus three and a half for the steelers for this week and i'm gonna take the over all right here's the deal. I love this game, but I hate this game. By the way, as Martin said uh, with his costume, I'll give you my backstory. I decided to dress up as Bears fan Sam when he woke up on Monday morning and looked at it, looked at his credit card balance after hammering Bears plus 12 last weekend. But now that, that joke's out of the way. Here's the deal. I love this game, but I hate it because it's Halloween in Cleveland. Steelers, Browns going to be in the 50s, maybe some rain. This is peak football weather. I couldn't be more excited to watch. Let's I like go! The, I like the under because the Steelers, they do this. Najee Harris, run. And, and then that's all they do. Shoot the clock. The Browns, Odell, he looks like the 60th best receiver in the league. Jarvis doesn't look any better. That's why I like the under. I like the Steelers plus three and a half. I'm picking that because I assume that Baker's going to play. I think Baker Mayfield's the worst quarterback in the division. I He's said the worst quarterback in the AFC except for Davis Mills. I think Case Keenum is better than he is. I'm dead ass. The last time Case Keenum had a good offensive line, two good receivers, and a good defense and a good running game, he made it to the NFC Championship game. No one can disagree with that. I would start him if the Browns want to win. I think Baker's going to play. I think he's going to struggle. I like the Steelers plus three and a half. I already know what this kid's going to pick, so we're all on the same team. God help us. <laughs> uh, I mean, yeah, you you said it perfectly. I'm uh, I'm off going to take the under. Uh, like Jake said, the Steelers get like maybe 14 points a game. There we go. Um, I'm also taking the plus three and a half. Uh, like Sam said, Steelers coming off a bye, and uh, they've won their last two games in a row. So, yeah, I'm taking the Steelers plus three and a half. All right. Uh, I'm taking the under in this game as well. So, I'll give you some stats to back that up. The under has hit in four of the Steelers' last six games. The under has hit in six of Cleveland's last eight home games against the Steelers. And the under is 6-2 and two in the last eight games between these two teams outright. So, all that says, and the fact that the Steelers don't have offensive line to take the under, it's going to be a good game. I'm excited to go. Me and Cam are going to be there. So, we get a little live report from Cleveland. Uh, and you're going to see the Steelers win. I'm not going to pick that because I don't want to jinx it like Sean just did. But I'm going to go ahead and take the under 42 and a half. <laughs> He didn't pick them out, right? He picked them plus three and a half. Same thing. You jinxed it. But it's all right. Game two. The Dallas Cowboys are traveling to Minnesota to take on the Vikings. The Cowboys are minus two and a half. The total is 55. So, Scott is a Cowboys fan. Jake is a Vikings fan. 
So we're going to let those two start it off. Whoever feels like they need to take the floor first can go. Jake, I'm going to let you take the floor on this one. I want you to give me all that smoke first, and I'm going to extinguish that shit. So let's go. Ooh, let's go, go, dude. First of all, I'm low-key a Cowboys fan because I picked them to make it to the Super Bowl this year. Love it. So I'm I'm proud of them being 5-1 and one to start off the year. Both teams off a bye, off, and they're both off in emotional overtime win. Uh, Dak hit C.D. Lamb to beat the Patriots, and Kirk Cousins hit K.J. Osborne to beat the Panthers, even though our kicking situation got us screwed in that game. We let the Panthers came come back with Sam Darnold. That was embarrassing to watch. Minnesota's 3-3. Three and three. We could easily be 5-1. and one. However, our next four games, Dallas – at the Ravens, Chargers, Packers. That's tough. I don't think we can win the division. Green Bay plays Arizona this weekend, even and they might lose, but I don't know if we can catch up to them. So we're going for a wild card spot. I think we need to split these next four games to have a legitimate shot at the wild card because after that, the schedule gets easier. I'm not going to go out on the limb and say we're going to go three more or four. No, I hope, to, I hope we get a split. I think that this could be a high-scoring game. I think Kirk Cousins can match – Dak blow for blow. Both teams have great offenses, and I'm picking Minnesota. I think it's actually plus one and a half now, but if you give me plus two and a half, I'll I'll take that point. It but, is at one, uh, like, it's at one and a half now, too. That's but I, you know, I don't even need it. I like Minnesota outright. Dalvin Cook's going to run for a buck and two TDs, and Justin Jefferson will be the best receiver. A lot of great receivers on the field this game. Justin Jefferson will be the best receiver on the field, and he's going to make – and it'll be, the, it'll be the first game all year where Trayvon Diggs does not have an interception. Ooh. Ooh. Minnesota wins 34-31. Book it, Scott. Take it away. Okay. Are you smoking something or am I? Because, I mean, that take, yeah. Okay. We'll, we'll roll with it, man. Look, I, we, as Sam last week, you got to support your team. You got to back them. Obviously, I'm going to back my boys here. We are going on the road. Yeah, that's, that's not easy. I, I completely understand, you know, the home team. Normally when a game's, a game's kind of tight, I'm like, yeah, I'm going to go with the, with the home team. I don't think this one is too close personally. I don't, I'm not scared with Dallas going on the road. I mean, we went to Foxborough, one of the most intimidating stadiums to go to, and we came out with a W. So, yeah, I mean, we're on the road, but that, uh, that doesn't bother me. My boys are, my boys are good. We're, Justin we're, Jefferson we're and Thielen are a little better than Nelson Aguilar and Kendrick Moore. They are. They are. That. I, 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 yeah. Let let let's set this roll. So look, Max <laughs> coming off this 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 kind of calf injury that that was concerning for me as a Cowboys fan. You know he took that. Yeah, we got the win, but at what cost did we get that win? And mm. you know the full you kind of we don't really know the ins and outs of that injury. Jerry Jones has been pretty pretty quiet in terms of what he's released. And I Dak looks set to go. So if Dak's going, he comes out firing on all cylinders. Like I hope he will, and I like I expect him to. I mean this Minnesota Vikings passing defense isn't great, so I do think. That look, I know, Jake, I know, but I'm listen, say, I, I have no defense for that. I'm not even going to try to fight you there. We need to be better. And I, I think Patrick I, Peterson, I should know my team better. I think he might be out. He's our best corner. I think he might be out. So I think that gives an opportunity problem, for. So yeah, there you go. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that gives Amari Cooper or CD a special kind of just mad hit take on this game is that Michael Gallup could be back. So that just adds another angle onto this. And I think the, the Cowboys are going to spread the ball across the pitch. I don't think, I like, I think Zeke will be heavy against, against this Vikings defense, but I don't think we're going to rely on the run. I think there's going to be more of a passing game. Now, funny you say that Dalvin Cook are going to, is going to run a fucking muck on these Cowboys teams. The Dallas Cowboys are ranked fifth in the fewest rushing yards uh, they're giving up to opposing running backs. So, I mean, we're a top five rushing defense. I think if we can lock Dalvin Cook up, which is not an easy task by any means, I can, I'm, I'm all for that. But I think if we can lock Dalvin Cook up to an extent and keep this passing uh, offense, you know, at bay to some sort of extent as well, then I think we got a chance to win this. I think the Vikings are going to be trailing the Cowboys. So I think they're going to have to desert the fucking run and they're going to have to pass this. And I just think that my, I, I think you said Dak and, and Kirk are on the same, same level or somewhat, I think. But, but I mean, I think Dak is just, it's just that bit better. No, I no, 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 no. I said that edge. when Kirk, when Kirk's at his best, which I expect him to play, it is, I, I think that's okay. better. I'm not going to worry. Okay. I think Kirk can match from blow for blow because if I had not mistaken, two years ago, we went into Jerry World and won 28 24. It was a high scoring duel. Kirk out dueled him at the Did end because he had, we had a late drive. And we only gave you like 20 seconds to drive the length of the field. It came down to a Hail Mary. Week. But he matched Jack throw for throw that night, which I think he can do Sunday night. 
You do. Yeah, I think you can. Like, I, I do think this will be a shootout, but funny saying that, I think there's going to be... A, the, I'm going to take the under in this game because I think these two teams are both coming off buys and I think these are going to have studied each other's defences and I think they'll be wow. very cagey to start off and I just think that 55 is a lot of damn points. And look, these two offences are great, but that's a lot of points. I'm going to roll my Cowboys on this one. I'm taking them minus one and a half and I'm going to smoke that W next week. So let's go, boys. Hey, shout out to Scott for buying that prop just to roast jake that takes that <laughs> you know it you know it, man you just know to it. set up that joke so shout out to you for that uh i'll go ahead Thanks, and go man. so uh as jake said this team could be i have a much better record than it does right now i've played a lot of good teams close i'm not fucking wearing the same one there we go take it off bro i literally was just like spitting on myself every time i said anything yeah all right so they played the Cardinals pretty well, pretty close, and they played the Bengals pretty close. Should have won that game, and they've beaten decent teams. Uh, the Cowboys have beat the Eagles, Panthers, and uh, New England, and the Chargers. And I just feel like Giants. Team- and the Lions, yeah, okay. And, the Giants. Oh, okay, yeah, even more. Which is um, slightly better. <laughs> might I just add that, you know, at that one of those victories was against the undefeated Carolina Panthers, who everyone was hyping up, and we Scott, just, I appreciate the fact them. that they were undefeated at the time. The Carolina Panthers mm-hmm. will finish this year way below 500. Oh, they're, they're crumbling. They're crumbling. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. They are crumbling. This team is boys. not a good team. No. The Denver Broncos are not a good team. That's why, Sam like, Darnold. people people make their rankings, and by the way, We've taken a couple weeks off. We have a Tommy's top 10 this week. So get ready for that. But oh, baby. when people put the Broncos, like Cowherd, I think, put the Broncos at four. Is that right, Jake? Yes, he did. Yeah. Back, back I think it was like week three or week two. Yeah. Like Broncos are not that good of a team. Um, so my pick for this game is the Minnesota Vikings plus two and a half. Uh, I'm also taking the under. Like Scott said, 55 is way too many points. There's a lot of trends that say take the uh, over, but – both these defenses are bad, and what Scott said is exactly what I was going to say. When both teams are coming off a bye, they've prepared for this game for a long time, and they're ready. They know who they're playing more than they will any other team this year. So I think the under hits in this game, and I like the Vikings. I think the Vikings might go on a little run here, and I think that the Cowboys are going to get exposed. And I'm Scott, I'm sorry to say this. I think that this might be another 8-8 eight and eight or whatever, 9-8 and eight year oh. for the Dallas Cowboys. I don't buy them. I don't, I don't buy it. Like, I don't think that they're that good. Everybody wants them to be good so that they can talk about them all the time, but they're not that mm-hmm. good. They like haven't beat anybody team. that real yet. Like, when, when they, you're when America's they, team. When they, they're not, okay, first off, they're not really America's team. Uh, there's a lot of backstory. Well, that, that's all the news coverage I see in Ireland. All I see in Ireland is that they're America's there's team. There's a lot of backstory, America. Scott. You should look up who is the real America's team, and you'll see. But, um, yeah. The Minnesota Vikings are America's fucking team, baby. Yeah. Purple. Uh, Right. So I, I think that the Vikings will win this game outright. We're not doing money lines, but I would sprinkle some money line and I will sprinkle some money line. Uh, so, yeah. Tommy. Uh, oh, Lamar. Uh, yeah, I'll go. Um, Tommy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> uh, hold on. Hold on, Ahmed. Let Sam go. He had something he wanted to say. Oh, all right, Ben. Go ahead. Go ahead. Well, I did have something I wanted to respond to, but you all talked like you were giving your final statements before a death sentence. So, <laughs> oh, like you were the Bears every week. Okay, oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. <laughs> no, 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 no. Nothing to get, nothing to get to say. What I, what uh, Jake was saying, the, both offenses are really good in this game. I think the Vikings have a tendency to play to their competition, and that could be a good and a bad thing. To where if they're playing against someone who can't score in a game where there's no scoring, they're not going to score. They're not going to run away with any game, and they're not going to get beat down in any game. All, all their games are pretty much close games, and they're they're scoring. If the other team's scoring, and they're not scoring. Kirk the Cousins scoring. is average. The word, when you look up average in the dictionary, it's a picture of Kirk Cousins' face. Yeah, it's a picture of his face. And and so that, I think, it's game. this game's going to be even. I'm rolling Cowboys here, one and a half, two and a half. I don't give a shit. Um, I just, I, I think... I disagree with Tommy that I do see it in the Cowboys this year. And I'm not saying I see a deep playoff run, but I see them as the that team from a couple of years ago when they had Des Bryant and they were good. And Stop it, dude. Stop it. Des oh, caught don't? it. Des caught, 
That's all. Dez caught it. All right, I'll agree with Scott. There, Dez Scott. caught that. I was watching that video in preparation. Sam, but- Sam who is who is Dez Bryant on this team? If you say CD Lamb, you're disrespecting Dez no, Bryant. I honestly think no, I'm Cooper. not saying anyone's Dez Bryant. No, no, Dez no one. No one on this team right now is what Des Bryant was. Besides, may, maybe Amari Cooper might get there at some point, which I, he's very good. And I assume, he, uh, I mean, Martin Des is a Hall head. of Famer. I think. Des like, is a Hall of Famer. That's complete bullshit. You don't think he's a Hall of Famer? You don't think he's a Hall of Famer? Let him go. Let him, let, just, just let the man go. For Des Bryant's a Hall of Famer? No. Yes. Yeah, I no. do, yes. honestly. I'm going to go. I'm going Cowboys here because her Cousins is average. Trayvon Diggs will most certainly get an interception if there's a prop bet on that. I would take it. I'm also going to take the prop bet on Dalvin Cook anytime touchdown score because that is lock of the lock of the year any any given game. Are these uh, all official picks, Sam? Uh, that's an unofficial pick, but you have, no put that down. Put that put the um put the Dalvin Cook anytime touchdown score on there because that's right. going to happen. Uh, but I am going Cowboys minus. Uh, what are we? Are we doing one and a half? Yes, Cowboys minus one and a half. I uh, I like this Cowboys offense. Dak with his calf injury, I think he'll be okay. Mm-hmm. But they they can fire too much, and they've shown this year that they aren't the scumbag, very underperforming Cowboys like they were last year. I get it. I think Dak the difference. Hurt. I agree. I think the difference between last year and this year is the defense. I mean, we yeah, need the, lead it, in, it, in, the in defense takeaways. knows when knows they're not a good defense, but they know when to make a play and they can yeah. make the play, which last they year can. they could never make the play. The, di- the difference is Dak. Like when you have a quarterback that can actually play your defense. It is, is Dak. Game. It, the difference is Dak. And I think it's, I think this is going to be a quarterback's game. And I think it's going to mm-hmm. come down to Dak versus Kirk Cousins. And I'll take Dak any day over Kirk Cousins. Ezekiel Elliott is also no longer a little chubby. I think he, uh, he, he's, he's doing got, his man. I don't know what, what work he routine he's on, on, but it's working. I think the most like underrated player on this Cowboys offense though, is Dalton Schultz. I mean, that man has been an animal. Dalton really, Schultz is an really, animal. really impressive. I mean, he's looking like the early days of Jason Witten in the Cowboys. Like, Jason Witten was phenomenal for the Cowboys. I'm not comparing Schultz to that. But You guys are throwing Cowboys, a lot of big comparisons out there. That are, we are, we are, the Cowboys look, are not I that good. Not. All right, so the, the, the bottom line, bottom line here, bottom line for, for my pick here, between Dak and all the weapons that he can use on this offense, I think they're going to pull away. I think it's going to be an offensive game. I'm not going to touch Sam, the total. Sam, are you uh, – hold on. I'm sorry to interrupt you. If you had to choose between Justin Jefferson and Adam Thielen or Amari Cooper and CeeDee Lamb, are you actually taking the Cowboys? That's a really tough question. Because you guys are like, the Cowboys have so many weapons. I think Dalvin Cook and those two receivers for the Vikings are better options than Yeah, but Dak's Cowboys. better. Dak's better. I agree like, with you about that, better. but you're talking about the weapons. Quarterback. I am talking about the weapons, but you think about it. Who's the tight end for uh, Vikings? Exactly. It ain't as, as, as Tyler as Conklin. Said, like, well, as Earl, 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 not every team has a great Dallas tight end. Yeah. yeah, the bo- the the bottom line is I see it being an offensive game, and I just think I think Dak's better. You think Dalton Schultz is the difference in this game? Is what you're saying? Mm, no, I think I no. I'm not saying Dalton Schultz is the difference. I'm I saying the Cowboys have looked better and have taken advantage of more of their opportunities. Mm-hmm. And when it comes to the point, which I think is going to come to a point in this game where someone on the defense needs to make a play, I think you're going to see somebody on the Cowboys defense make a play. I Harrison Smith, don't get me wrong, one of my favorite safeties in the game. Mm-hmm. I don't know. I, I see the Cowboys defense making the play. Love it, Sam. Get on it all you want. It's Cowboys minus one and a half. And when it hits it. and it's Love free it. money, you guys can you guys can come and, and thank me and send me a couple tips on Venmo. We done boys, man. We done yeah, boys. We done boys. Syrup, what do you what do you think about this game? There's been a lot of a lot of banter surrounding this one, uh, so I mean, I'll just I'll just I'll go out with it. Yeah, I like Cowboys minus one and a half. I'm wow. a big believer in them, uh, and 55 points is a lot of points. But I could see this going to be a blow for blow affair, as uh, as the mighty Jake Lewis did say. Um, both great offenses on both sides of the field. Uh, I can't believe Jake. I can't believe you said that this is going to be Trayvon Diggs' first game without a pick because I was literally about to say that, but now I look like a copycat. It's, uh, I mean, it's the man's plan. I can't even say his plan lights out because he's a lot, he's allowing all these receiving yards, but it's pretty cool to see what he's been doing every single week. With that being said, hopefully Dak's healthy. Um, and I like Cowboys minus one and a half and over fifty-five. I'm gonna go, 
And um, okay, go. <laughs> uh, I don't have much to add. I feel like all the main topics have been pointed, but uh, I will say that I don't think anyone's mentioned this game is uh, prime time. So that might have a factor for uh, the Cowboys, I guess, as uh, America's team and all that stuff. If you buy into that, prime time uh, Kirk. Yeah, Jake uh, knows. Jake knows about prime time Kirk. It's not making me feel more confident about. My <laughs> uh, with that being said, I got the Cowboys minus one and a half. Ahmed, right. did you go? All right, I have it. All right, so. Uh, This hurts me to say because I am a little biased. I absolutely hate the fucking Cowboys. But um, I'm going to go ahead and take the Cowboys minus one and a half just because they're not the same team they've been for the past couple of years. They're a whole different team. I I think you've seen that throughout the season. Um, So Minnesota is actually eight and four against – Have you though? Like have you seen it throughout the season? Like I'm not trying to like be the biggest Vikings fan ever here, but like I hate the Cowboys (laughs) – what have they done differently? Like, they beat the Chargers who just got blown the fuck out. So, are they really that good? Who knows? I, they beat so the Patriots I, I, who are not that good. Like, they have Bill Belichick, but Mac Jones is, like, a rookie quarterback. You can't expect that much. Like, they're not really Tampa good. down to the last play, even though it's a loss. It's impressive. It's true. Yeah, they, that was a good I loss. I think what they did was was the first game of the season. You can I mean, say the same thing about the, the Vikings. Trap, Vikings, so. Vikings took Arizona down to the wire as well. Vikings did, did but I just feel like the – the Cowboys have had more improvements this year. Kellen Moore, his, our offensive coordinator, has been fantastic in his play calling. I know I see it on Cowboys forums all the time. Like some guys are nearly calling for Kellen Moore to take over from Mike McCarthy. Can I press Scott on something? Hit me. I picked Dallas to get to the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And the reason, and the biggest reason I'm not confident about that is because Coach McCarthy's not that good at time situation game managing. <laughs> I, I, look. Uh, Mm-hmm. This guy on FS1, I'll give him credit because I don't want to rob his shit. I lo- watch the shows. His name's Nick Wright. He said what the Cowboys should do is fire Mike McCarthy and say Kellen Moore take over because Kellen Moore is going to be a coach next year somewhere. Just let him take over now. Mm-hmm. And if they did that, I uh, even though Jerry Jones got the ego, he wants to make the guy he hired look like a good hire. Mm-hmm. If they got rid of Mike McCarthy and said, "Dude, you just just Kellen Moore is, is a better option for us." Sorry, I, I would. Jake, real quick before we move on, I don't want to I don't want to hold anything up before we move on. Actually, that's a good point. I was thinking I was talking about that someone earlier today about these coordinators coming in as head coaches. I don't think that that's a good idea. Think transfer the play calling over to Kellen Moore, definitely. But I I think Kellen Moore, I don't say he's a great play caller. He's a great offensive minded minded coach. I don't see him being like that kind of head coach. You see it all the time with coordinators that do well at their position, but sometimes they get to the head coaching position mm-hmm. and they're just not ready for that. You saw it with Robert Sala, uh, although you can, it's a little too early to tell that yeah. <laughs> Vic Fangio was a great example. He was, he was, and this isn't even biased. You all know it. 2018 bears best defense in the league. And he ran that, that was all him. And he went over and got a head coaching job in Denver after that. And he's been less than subpar, um, I don't think I, I think that that's a little like I I don't know how to word it, but I think it's uh oh, those are defensive guys though. You look at Kyle Shanahan, Sean McVay, Matt Lafleur. The, oh my God, these guys are geniuses. Kellen well, Moore, defensive yeah. guy, he might have a little bit of a long. Actually, run. yeah, I image especially. I I think the first I think the first coordinator to get a head coaching job next year is going to be Brian Dable. But we can leave that for another time. Hey, by the way, just so you guys know. Bill Belichick, defensive coach. Mike Tomlin, defensive coach. Uh, uh, yeah, but uh, that's not the same thing. By the way, also, I'm not here for the big Mike disrespect. What's the difference between the Cowboys, according to you guys? Every year, except last year, I'm not counting, but every year that Dak's been there, it's basically been essentially a similar team, and they haven't been able to do anything. What's the difference? Big Mike. Right, so, so to Maybe off. Big Mike has changed the <laughs> locker room, and you guys are just critiquing him. And I agree. I think if they got rid of them, that'd be a mistake. How are you going to fashion fuck up watermelons? Yeah. How are you going to fuck up right. the locker room? Like how right, so, you're a good team. So to finish off with why I'm picking the Cowboys, um, you, Tommy, you asked, why do you guys think they're a good team? I think they're different this year because it's on offense and defense as well. And I think with offense, one of the biggest reasons is that their Dak this year is totally fucking different. I mean, he's got, he's got weapons. It's, it's going to be offensive shootout for this game, obviously, because the, the Vikings, you got all the playmakers. 
But if you think about it, the Cowboys are a different team just because it's – I don't know if it's the coaching, but they've got a different swag this year. I mean, also, they were on hard knocks, I think, this year. Yeah, That might have something to do with it. Maybe that might have something to do with it. But the Vikings are one of the most mediocre teams in the NFL. Me You're a Washington team. football team fan. I just want Not, to put I, that I know, I know. But look, when you think <laughs> – Joke. When you think, <laughs> when, you think, when you think about the most mediocre, I think about the Vikings. And I think about Kirk Cousins. So I, you know, honestly, who I think about, and I think if you polled America over the last thirty years, if you said who's the most mediocre Dallas. team, the Dallas no, Cowboys. No, eight no, and eight. Not this year. Not not Minnesota. This. Yeah, I don't not think this year. Not this year. first. You think of awful field goal kicking. That's what I think of. Yeah. All right. All right. Let's get into Game Three. We talked about the game for like forty-five minutes. The Indianapolis <laughs> Colts against the Tennessee Titans. It's in Indianapolis. The Titans are minus one, and the total is 51. Uh, Titans are potentially the hottest team in football right now, coming off a win against the Bills, a win against the Chiefs. They're hot right now. So we're going to start with Jake. What are your thoughts on this game? I'll be short and sweet because last game I ran it. I like the Titans. They're hot. I think Julio, and well, especially A.J. Brown, but Julio also, he doesn't look as right as he normally does, but I think he's playing his way back into game strength. A.J. Brown's getting his groove back in. And Derrick Henry had a down week last week, and they still beat the Chiefs by 24. I think they're hot. I'm riding them. Martin, I love you. The Colts beat up the Texans, and then they beat San Francisco in awful weather. for And for a dome team, that's very impressive, but I think – the Bucs going to have to stop with Derrick Henry. I like the Titans. I like the over. I think it's in Indy, so good weather, high scoring. Give me the Titans minus one. Jig, I like – I like. I don't want to cut anybody off. I feel like I've been going early too much. But I like – I wanted to say this game. I love the board here. I am slamming Titans. I probably would have taken it as my lock if it wasn't um, if it wasn't on our list here. But they've been hot, as Tommy said, hottest team in the league right now. Um, they're playing the Colts. Nothing against the Colts. The Colts have been hot too, uh, based on the competition they played. I mean, you could say whatever you want to, but the Colts. I said it last week. Colts have found their groove offensively a little bit, and if the weather wasn't like Hurricane Katrina like last week, the mm-hmm. Colts probably would have scored forty points. And um, mm-hmm. so that is why I'm going to start by taking the over here, uh, over fifty one. I um, I think that's yeah, that's uh, a slam dunk. Um, but I also like uh, Tennessee minus one. I could see it being it's uh, I could see this being a close game. Uh, definitely going to be offensive. Both offenses have been firing away. Neither team has a great defense, although the Colts' defense looked kind of looked pretty stellar in the last couple of weeks. Um, but the, both of these quarterbacks, like I said last week, Carson Wentz finding his groove. Uh, Ryan Tannehill has no pressure on him because he's got Derrick Henry, Track Cito. And then he's also got, and then if Derrick Henry can't figure it out for a game for whatever reason, oh, I've got Julio Jones and AJ Brown that I can just toss up the ball to, who are two of the better receivers in the league. AJ or Julio Jones, guaranteed Hall of Famer. Uh, I see that. I see the Titans winning this game. I could see this game going into the seventies, let alone the fifties. But yeah, that's uh, that's my take. I'm just gonna keep it short like that. You guys, I appreciate your sentiments and the apologies. And I would love <clears throat> to say that, you know, like I, it pissed me off or like I disagree, but I will not succumb to hubris and let my fanhood take over my actual pick, bet picking where I am also taking the Titans minus one this week. As wow. This guy is not a real fan. Oh. Oh, that's, not, that's not how this works. That's he not how this works. Team. Who, who am I? Who am I? I'm a, I'm a data analyst. You're so, syrup. What, what do I do? I'm, I am also syrup. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Leader Hosen. All I do all day is I crunch numbers and I and I trust the data. And if the data is telling me, you want to say the Colts are hot, who the fuck have we beaten? All right. You're, you're, you're your own uh, harshest critic. The Titans are the hottest team in football right now. And all power to them. I love that offense. And I, I just can't come around to the belief. Yes, the offense for the Colts has started to click a little bit. They've got some weapons on defense. We beat San Fran in uh, a goddamn dishwasher style of, uh, you know. Almost beat Baltimore. Should it be Baltimore? Almost beat Baltimore. Lamar Jackson, ice in his veins. Uh, it's And the Titans already beat us previous in the season. They say it's hard to beat a, t- a team twice. I, I think it goes down in Indianapolis. It'll be good weather, so I'm also taking the over because um, I, I don't think it'll be I don't think it'll be anything 
you know, too crazy when looking at, you know, the, the scoring, but 50, 51 is definitely, is definitely feasible. Um, two wonderful, amazing running backs in this affair, Jonathan Taylor, up and coming star and Derrick Henry kind of a, you know, mainstay at that top of the running back list. So I like Titans minus one and, uh, and I'm taking the over. Martin, I'm going to, I'm going to roll with that as well. I think we've all, have we all said Titans minus one and, and we're taking the over. Yeah. Is that, That's um, is that what we're rolling with? Um, Oh, sorry. Have I just interrupted you there, Tommy? Apologies, my man. No, you're, you're good. No, oh, first man, off, first off, if you, had a line plan. you definitely had a lot planned. If you start oh, talking, Scott, you can always mm-hmm. just keep going. Like, don't stop. No, I, sh- I should have kept going. That was my bad one. Okay, so basically, what I lo- love everything Martin just said there. I'm completely piggybacking it. I think a lot of us are going Titans minus one. So am I. I'm taking the over as well. I like this a lot. Martin, you said literally, who have we beaten? It's such a great point. You've beaten the 49ers and the Texans. I mean, two, I, two of the one, like, I would put them as like a few of the worst teams in the National Football League at the moment. I like, think the Niners are so and many Dolphins. issues. And the Dolphins. Oh, look, we can go on the Jets, the what Joe Flacco Jets now, I suppose. Um, it, it, just, it just gets worse and worse the further we go. I sat here last week and uh, I said that Carson Wentz was a slightly underrated quarterback in the league and Ahmed ripped it into me um, for saying that that was a disgraceful call and this and that and he's not he's did Carson Wentz played extremely well in that game and I'm not saying he's elite but the Colts have something have, have a nice thing going here and I, I do like it I think Michael Pittman is really coming into himself this season that man has been very good he mossed the 49ers uh defender he, he got up and grabbed that ball with serious passion like he wants to win he's he's the key to in this team along with Jonathan Taylor um but I'm still going to roll with the Titans in this one I think that the Colts have a great rushing defense. They're ranked three, three third in the league. Like, like that's that's solid. And if you want to stop Derrick Henry, that's the way to do it. So I'm going to say that Derrick Henry doesn't have this greatest game. He's a good game, but not a great game. But I think this game is going to be won through the pass. And I think AJ Brown and Julio Jones are going to be the key to success in this one. And yeah, I just I just think the Titans just they like they held the Kansas City Chiefs to three points, three goddamn points. And Derrick Henry threw a touchdown pass. I just think it's amazing. Titans are coming off a three-game winning streak. Let's go, Titans. All right, so I'm going to tell you guys why you're wrong. The over, first off, I'm taking the over as well, but I'm taking the Colts. Uh, the over is 5-0 and in the Titans' last five road games. The over is 8-0 and in the Colts' last eight games versus a winning team. Tennessee is 5-15 and straight up in its last 20 games against the Indianapolis Colts. And the Indianapolis Colts are 5-1 ATS in its last six games. The Colts, as Martin said, lost to the Titans earlier in the year. The Colts right now are fighting to make the playoffs. This division is still open. The Titans are hot right now, but they lost to the Jets. So you never know what's going to happen. The Colts are still alive, and they can't go 0-2 versus the Titans if they want to win this division. This is essentially a must-win game for the Colts in Week 8. Things are heating up. This is going to be a close affair, and the Titans are a good team, and I picked them the last couple of weeks, and I like them, but the Colts have to win this game, and the stats are telling me, as Martin said, I trust the data. I don't know what data is. I trust the data, and the data is telling me to take the over 51 and the Colts plus one. Um, I don't really buy into all that data stuff. Maybe that's why I like don't have a good record. That's probably why you have the worst record of everybody. <laughs> <laughs> for those for those couple people who still believe in me, I'm gonna take the uh, the Titans here. Um, I feel less confident now. Damn it! <laughs> yeah, I mean they're just rolling, like you guys said, and uh, yeah, I'm just gonna go with my gut here. I got the Titans. Bam! <laughs> Let's go. I'm gonna go with the Titans minus one or minus one and a half here. Um, just because I think the Titans have uh, way more weapons than the Colts. Um, and I think Derrick Henry, uh, I think Scott already mentioned it, Derrick Henry actually didn't have a great game last week. I think this week he's going to try to make up for it. And, yeah. A hey, good take. Anyone that listens to Ahmed, you're probably going to lose money. So I would just listen to me and Jake. <laughs> hey, hey, whoa, I'm, whoa, whoa. What about the boy? Whoa. Uh, Sam, Sam's picked doing well. The Sam's Bears doing well. last week, dude. Yeah, yeah Sam man. picked the Bears. So you picked Bears. the Ravens last week. The Bears. Yeah, yeah, I, lost, I lost. I lost. Yeah, yeah, okay, okay. Lost a fair amount of money on that. Simmer down. Let's simmer down. Hey, 
read the Instagram comment. Let that be a lesson, kids. Even the greats have bad days. I'll tell you that. Listen, it, it happens to us. Yeah. I mean, that's not the move. Yeah. Happened on Sunday for Kirk Cousins, like, you know. Well, Every Sunday. <sighs> it is now time for the best part of the show. Yup. The locks of the week. Does anybody want to go first? Yes. Go ahead, Sam. So I was I love this game so much. And I love it due to the fact that I was about to take the Lions as my lock for the third week in a row. But instead, I'm gonna go Lions Eagles under 48 and a half. Um I could see the Lions winning this game. I think if they're going to win a game this season, this is going to be the one because the Eagles suck. Uh, they've got nothing going for them. And uh, 48 and a half points for these two abysmal rosters, that's a lot of points. Um, Nick Sirianni is showing his team pictures of flowers when they've lost four of their last five games, thinking that's going to help the situation. It's not. Um and Dan Campbell, I don't know what he's got to figure it out. I like him a lot. This, by the I, way, I, this is the greatest NFL head coaching matchup of all time. Probably. These two um, guys are like, like not real humans. They're like characters that are like they are. They're, NFL they're, they're head video coaches. game characters. They're like they're, it's it. like create a coach in Madden, and you get to make whoever you want to, and it's these guys. Um, I see this going under. I see. I, I'm envisioning a uh, twenty-three to twenty. Detroit win here, but I'm saying under 48 and a half either way. Uh, no matter the result here, it's going under. That's I. There's not really much that I have to back it up other than that these two teams both suck, and it's not going to be a high-scoring game. Um, I'm just going to start by saying uh, my pick for the Chiefs last week was not, was not the move. It was pretty <laughs> embarrassing. What? And for uh, that no, no, reason – man. Did you not pick the Jets as your lock of the week, man? He did. He did. You took Jets. Yeah, I think I think that's worth it. No, I no offense. We we, we get stuff wrong. Even the greats have bad days, but fuck right, me, right. man. Yeah, enough with the slander. Um, <laughs> I have the Giants minus 10 against the Chiefs. Plus, plus 10. Plus 10 against the Chiefs. We uh have Sterling Shepard back. Galladay is back. Did you say we? Oh, I'm picking them. I'm not a giant. Fan. <laughs> he is a giant for the. He's a giant for this pick. Yeah. Sterling Shepard's back. Galladay's back. Saquon is questionable to be back. And um, yeah, Giants minus ten, plus ten. That's plus 10. Uh, that's pretty big. So. Yeah. All right. Yeah, uh, I don't hate that pick whatsoever. Um, but I will go back to the over unders for my mortal lock. Uh, and I am going to be taking the over of 48 and a half points from the Patriots chargers game. Um, I think the chargers need a bounce back. And I think these are two young, not uh, obviously Mac Jones being the rookie, but Justin Herbert, you know, still being a younger QB in this league, this is going to be an exciting matchup to watch might potentially be game of the year candidate. Um, None of the defenses are really stellar. Uh, like, like there's some pieces missing on, on on both of them. I feel like so, forty eight and a half points. That's what seven touchdowns total. Uh, I think I could even surpass that. So, I uh, I'm definitely I love Patriots Chargers over forty eight and a half for uh, for my lock. I respect that. A couple weeks ago, the Lions played my Vikings, and Sam's lock was. Detroit plus eight or whatever it was. And I made fun of him and I said, you're if if it's a mortal lock, like you got to get this right or you die, you're going to risk it on an 0 and 4 or 0 and 5 team, however bad they were at that time. And he, what did and I he say? Said, Wait, what? I said, what did I say? I said, yeah, yes. surprisingly, yeah, because the spread's too much. And, uh, and you won. Congrats. And I didn't even hate it because I was so upset with the Vikings because they blew the Browns game the week before. I was like, please just let us win. I don't care if we cover. But I thought it was an absurdity to risk your life on a team with no wins. But I'm doing that this week because I think the Eagles are god-awful. I'm picking the Lions plus three and a half. I don't know if they win, but it's got to be a field goal. They play hard. They gave the Rams as much as they could last week. Onside kicks, fake punt. Um, I didn't 
because it's the Lions. I didn't watch every snap, but I'm sure they ran a, a trick play or two. I think they're going to give the Eagles a great game. The, this is one of the most terrible games on the slate. The only people who are watching this is if you're a gambler like Sean. Um, but I got the Lions plus three and a half as my mortal lock. I think that's a great pick, Jake. Uh, I think the Lions. I think the Lions have been the most like. I think the Lions have been the most mortal locks of any team from our picks this year. Yeah, because the spreads are ridiculous. And the Every, Lions are a good cover team. I'm just anti Eagles, especially, especially for, like and the Eagles. Fucking suck, dude. This is yeah. embarrassing. Sirianni, my goodness. the Lions have been in Better every single game. I like I like Lions money line here. That's not my pick. I'm just saying. I'm I'm putting money on that. Yeah, they're gonna win at some point. Dan Campbell is too good of a leader. All right, cool. I'm taking. So I know my lock last week didn't hit, but I think you could cash out this week if you have trust in me. So I'm for this week. I'm gonna go ahead and take the Bengals versus the Jets. Uh, I'm taking minus nine and a half for the Bengals because it's ten and a half. Oh, it's ten and a half now. Okay. Yeah. Um, so I, I'm gonna take. I'm still gonna take them. That's a one point difference. Uh, I'm still gonna take the Bengals here, just because I think they're gonna win by nine now. Hundred percent. Hey, come on now. <laughs> um, I, I don't think the Jets are gonna be able to stop Burrow and their offense. Uh, I think that's a great pick. And the Jets. I mean, they're they're just having a terrible season. I, they beat uh, the Titans, but I think that was just a a shitty game by the Titans. So for my lock for this week, and I know it's gonna hit. I'm taking Cincinnati, baby. Love it, Ahmed. Love it. So this Sunday, I was sitting watching the football as I usually do. It's half one in Ireland. It's bye week in fancy football. So I got Jameis Winston and Alvin Kamara starting my team. I'm watching this game purely because I just want to see how my fancy team does and if I can go to bed in peace or not and not have a fancy football dream, which is a terrible, terrible dream when you wake up and think your team won and it doesn't. Mm. Um, yes, us diehard fancy fans do have those dreams. So um, so I'm watching this game. I'm looking at this, the Saints Seahawks going, see, S- Saints are going to come in here. They're going to light this up. You know, it's Geno Smith versus Jameis Winston. You know, Jameis Winston's got the talent. And half time i i was so bored i went to bed i couldn't hack it anymore my eyes were going and i'm just like what is this game the saints were appalling i think that and might be the worst game of the year i think that that, that, that was, was ranking, just, i would put that one at number one it was it was gross dude it was it, disgusting it, to watch it was absolutely disgusting to watch there was no creativity whatsoever from the um the, from the saints they they were just they, they look clueless if alvin kamara didn't get that ball if or or if he wasn't playing they they wouldn't have won that game i mean they have like the lack of weapons on that offense is, is actually terrifying how dependent they are on alvin kamara and therefore my lock of the week is the bucks minus five and a half i think the bucks are going to come in here they're going to toast these saints and I, I always use toast but i'm going to use it in this term as well because i just think they're, they're too good and the saints are going to be found out for what they are and that's an uncreative football team that you know tom brady is gonna is gonna run a muck on and if i know we we're talking about mortal locks i would i like tom brady you take my mortal lock i trust you my mortal lock of the week is the buffalo bills against the miami dolphins they're a minus 12 and a half Miami's 0-6 straight up in their last six games against the Bills. Bills own the Miami Dolphins. Uh, Buffalo is 4-1 ATS in the last five games, and they've had some some decently big spreads this year. Um, Texans have agreed to terms with the Miami Dolphins to acquire Deshaun Watson. They're still figuring out some technicalities with the deal, but, I mean – I don't I don't know like we talked about this the other day like I don't know if he plays right away or if he plays at all but it just doesn't seem like they believe in Tua at all and that's got to be fucking him up a little bit and I that's not right I don't think they they gave Tua enough time uh they took him out of the game for Fitzmagic a couple times which was pretty fucked up when you're trying to get your rookie quarterback like acclimated um so I think that the, the Dolphins probably get blown out here and then they make the trade for Deshaun Watson so are you worried about Tua for this week you think he might go off? No, I mean, look, I I hope that Tua goes off. I want my lock to hit, but I don't think that Tua got a fair shot, and I hope that he gets a shot somewhere mm-hmm. else if they do get Sean Watson, maybe with the Steelers. Don't know what Ben's going to do, but we 
Don't have a quarterback after Ben. Dwayne so. Haskins season. Let's go. I do believe in Dwayne Haskins. I do believe in Dwayne Haskins for the record. I, like, but, I think it's fair saying, too, it deserves a shot. But, I mean, he's got some good weapons over there in, in, in Miami. I mean, Mike Kaziki, he's doing well. Jalen Waddle, I think, is a sneaky pick um, in this game for a touchdown score. Jalen Waddle, I mean, any time touchdown score, I, li- I like that a lot. Scott, um, honestly, I, I, could see, I could see the Dolphins not scoring a touchdown in this game. Really? I could oh, see this no. being, I, I think, I could I see think this being like 40-something to three. Like, I hate to say that, but I think the Dolphins could be like Texans level, Jets level at this point, which is sad to say. But everybody, thank you for joining us this week. What about your top 10? Oh, this is going to be a separate video. A separate video. Ah, Sorry for interrupting. I suck at life. All right. Uh, Thank you, everybody, for joining us. And I hope you have a good Halloween and a good time watching football. Uh, Have a good evening. Bam. Bam. Love it.